All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Casey. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Coaching Over Coffee. Um, this week, our topic is going to be introducing our newest coach. We have Coach Patrick all the way to my left. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. How was everyone else doing? Phenomenal. Good. Never had it so good. <laughs> Let's go. And we've got All subtitles, right. so the audio is good on Facebook. Oh, that's cool. good, awesome. yeah. All right, let's oh, rock It's like and really roll. professional, like we've got a producer and stuff. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. There's a little bit of awkward silence. Way to open <laughs> yes. up the show, Casey. <laughs> Dan, right. go ahead. Take it All over. All right, cool. So, uh, hot tag. All right, cool. Um, so, uh, introduce yourself for the audience that doesn't already know you. I believe you've been on a couple of Coaching Over Coffees previously. Uh, I know the uh, the orange stool incident. I saw it while I was on the road. I'm that sorry. Cool. Yeah, we're not we're not going to talk about that. But introduce yourself to the audience and tell them who you are and who you're going to be here at the gym. Yeah, so I am Patrick Conway. I am currently a phys ed teacher at the Queensbury Elementary School. Um, I'm also coaching JV football. Uh, modified basketball and then JV baseball as well. So today we actually have our first JV football game in Troy. Um, and then varsity started last night and they got postponed because of lightning. So come out and support them at six o'clock tonight at the new turf field. Okay, little plug. Yeah. Mm. I like it. Shameless plug. So and then finish the rest of the question. There you so go. I was yeah. That. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sounded like his sentence was over. All right, so I am going to be starting here. Thank you to Ryan and the team. Um, I'm going to be doing intro classes at 5 a.m. for people who are new to fitness, um, who want to start their journey. Uh, I'll be there for you at 5 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the moment. That's cool. Um, okay, let's talk about it. Let's get into my first question. All right, let's do it. Everybody up. go down the line. Name your favorite coach sergeant military person leader that you've ever incorporated yourself with and then reader's digest version why you want me to go first you're the first one on my left let's go all right coach that comes to mind someone i just met within the last week probably david alexander oh, or donnie cool. from dbc they're just two of the smartest individuals that i've ever met and they taught me a lot in 16 hours worth of time so takes a lot to educate other people so yeah. very impressive people uh sergeant probably, slaughter no 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 <laughs> uh actually uh sergeant major johnson uh when i was in the first cab was and he the, in austin powers no 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 that's a johnson. Yeah, johnson uh totally different dude but um he if whenever i messed up and it was inevitable that i would he never was the type to just rip you apart he always would take me aside and just be like this is how you messed up and this is how you shouldn't do it again and it never came across as being like mean he always was kind of a father figure sure you're gonna love this one i love coach bobby rod oh yeah yeah, yeah. because you know with coaching you need to be you need to show that you care, obviously, and what he did through caring, he, he sh showed a lot of energy and enthusiasm every single day. Like, even on his worst days, he would, he would just bring it, and kids were terrified of, of him, um, but it was something special because he was always there for us. Um, he was always uh, giving all he had for us, and I thought that was, like, super inspiring to play for, like, to be a part of someone that's... That, shows that he truly cares energy is contagious yes Absolutely. and lack of energy is contagious too um my favorite coach is someone that you guys all know it's coach 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 velastro and i think more so now as an adult because i get more value out of life conversations rather than the sporting conversations that we had when, when i was younger even though he was like you know good cop as far as an assistant coach and we had a bad cop um but i think the life lessons and friendships that you develop later on in life with said coaches, I think mean more than than uh, teaching somebody how to hit a baseball. You know, I'm sure if you went to Bobby Rod and had a question for him today, he would, you know, give you his all still. And I'm sure if you called Sergeant Major, and and I'm sure even at the higher level with you know the guys at DBC, I think they would still take that time to respond to you too. So cool. well, that's the thing I'm, too that I'm learning from coaching is you have to build those relationships with your players so you can be approachable for them because like a lot of a lot of times you'll have a coach that. Is just there to coach, sure. Not necessarily be there for them, 
Like, I think it's so important to have those relationships with your players mm -hmm. so, they, so they feel like they can approach you with anything. Because I think it's because that puts you on the same level together. And then when you're going into battle, they're going to do what they can for you and you're going to do what you can for them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. players or clients or, yes, sure. you know, friends, I think, like you said, life is built around relationships. And that was one of the things that I was thinking of as you were saying that, and I'm glad you said clients, is because the the same thing that you're talking about right now with building the rapport with your players and, you know, working with them and going into battle with them. There are some days where, like, you'll work with your clients and they are, it is smooth sailing. And then there are other days where, you know, you're the energy that picks them up and gets them through a workout, as as you've seen in, like, either group training or even the one-on-one -on -one sessions that you've seen us working. So it's like to hear that already being said is is a refreshing thing because you already have that built into you. And I have a weird question if I can go next with questioning. Um, how long have you known Ryan? Mm. And <laughs> how long have you known Ryan for? And how did working with him help you become a coach for Queensbury and then now a coach here? So I knew Ryan. I started going to him my sophomore year in high school. So your freshman so. summer going in your sophomore year, I think. Yeah, so what was that, seven years ago, eight years ago? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. And, uh, nine years ago. Nine years ago, because Justin Cholstra brought us in, um, and you put us through an athletic workout. And I remember my first two, few times going to you, I was in relatively good shape at that time, too. I would go out in the parking lot, and I'd be spinning. <laughs> never, never puked at the gym. There's never? There's no proof of that. Never? <laughs> never, ever. Okay. But... I just remember, like, you put us through, put us through some good stuff, and um, he changed the trajectory of Queensbury Athletics, whether he'll admit it or not. Like, he really helped us. We had a good group that was going to him. We had a good group of athletes um, that were going to him, and I've told Ryan this before, but he's someone who who's truly inspired me through his hard work ethic. Um, he put in so many hours at that other gym, which is why he's been able to build this empire up. He would be there starting at five in the morning and I don't think we ended until nine o'clock at night. Yeah, but then, then we would hang out. Again. But we would and hang we'd out. Talk, eat waffles. Yeah, and, we'd have protein waffles until like eleven o'clock at night. They got school the next day. Parents probably hated me. <laughs> but it's like I, I learned a lot of great character traits from him. Like being being a selfless individual, you know, putting other people first. Um I think there's times where you should try to put yourself first in situations, but you're always someone who's reaching out and like caring for, you know, that next person because you truly want us to succeed. Yeah. And um, we were able to get a state championship out of that. I think one of the things that I remember out of you guys, and I always talk about it on this show too, is like you take a group of athletes and work hard and compete. You guys competed against each other every day. And I think that's something that you, you don't really see a lot because it takes a really special breed of person to show up when their head is spinning the next time and be like, hey, I want to do it again. Hey, bring it on again. And I think you guys motivated each other more than I motivated you. I just created the parameters of how to motivate each other. But you guys brought it. And it was a mix of guys and girls too, which I think was even more you know, enlightening to see is like, hey, how could the girls you know, push the guys or vice oh, versa? They were just as tough as us. Yeah, like, I think they're a little bit tougher. Probably a little bit tougher, yeah. yeah. But it was nice, like in every single drill, we were able to compete. Um, like I remember trying to go toe for toe with Brett. Yeah. He beat me and everything. But mm -hmm. That still wouldn't stop me. I would, I would try to. You guys were also record. coachable too. I think that if you look at like one thing of a client or a player or, you know, even as a coach in our aspect, we don't know everything. You know, so if I had a drill that I didn't like, you guys would kind of tell me about it or, hey, we should do this better. Um, but I think the coaching aspect, you know, what, what makes a great coach? I want to kind of segue into that. So, I mean, Casey, what do you think? What makes well, a great a coach? Well, I mean, the, the one thing that really sticks out for you. Empathy. Hey, they're a great we talk coach. talk about it all the time. Empathy, you have to be empathetic. And yeah. I had a similar question where I was going to ask you guys to talk about the difference between a trainer and a coach. Okay. Because they're not the same thing. Sure. Okay, let's go to that question first. Dan, you go first. Oh, um, I, we've talked about it before, you know, the classic thing is a trainer is a rep counter and a coach is someone who, you know, guides you and, and 
encourages you and is always there for you like the line is open 24 7 i think for me and my thing is is that relatability i know a lot of people try to put themselves and i'm not saying this just in fitness but in coaching and everything but like in even in leadership they try to put themselves on a pedestal and they have to like they have to remember to be relatable to the people they're working with you know everyone brings a different story to the table and a different why so being able to understand where a person's coming from i think is is key pc what do you think between coaching and training yeah what's the difference um i like i was saying before i think coaches actually care for the person that they're working with like doing the little things outside of actually training like reaching out to them like hey how you doing do you need help with anything like showing like showing that you actually mean something to them um i think it's like a huge difference whereas like i'm I'm still learning about the training but i I guess like what dan was saying about just rep counting just showing up because you're supposed to be here yeah as coaches um invest their time in their clients or athletes uh beyond what they're supposed to well i mean i think it's like you go and watch tyler dorvey playing baseball this summer you know, you you drove an hour to go watch him. You know, it was surprisingly to see you there, but it's really kind of reassuring that that's somebody that you want to surround yourself with is someone that's going to go do that extra thing. Yeah. I think to be a great coach, you have to be a great communicator. You know, saying one thing and doing another is completely different, but also communicating enough where you understand the person and what they're trying to accomplish. Because if yeah. you assume that you know what they want without them telling you. I don't think that you're a great coach because if I tell you that, hey, you need to lose 25 pounds because you're you know, di- you're pre-diabetic and that doesn't motivate you, but being a different pan size does, you need to figure that out. You know, because if not, then you're kind of like, you're going to run into that resistance thing later on. Mm-hmm. Your, your example. Okay. Um, That's your question, so. Well, if you Google like what is like the best trait of a good coach or something like that, the first thing that comes up is like having knowledge. I mean, it refers to sports, but it talks about having knowledge on the sport that you're coaching. But I almost disagree with that. I mean, knowledge is power. Like we need to have knowledge on what we're coaching 100 percent. But like I had a kid come in yesterday. He wants speed and agility for soccer. I don't I've never played soccer. I don't need to play soccer in order to help this kid excel in sure. soccer, if that mm. makes sense. So yeah. like, kind of like what you said, just knowing your client, being empathetic. There's a difference between like sympathizing with people and mm. empathizing with people. Having empathy is like truly putting yourself in someone else's shoes and being able to like understand their feelings and needs and wants. Yeah. BC, what's your question? I heard you use the word motivate. So. Motivation and discipline. Give a definition of both and talk about possibly how they're connected or how they're disconnected. I think they're disconnected because I think we would all agree because I think we've talked about this a lot. Motivation is bullshit because I think if you wait for your motivated until you're motivated, you'll never do something. Mm-hmm. I think discipline, what's going to get you you know, started is developing those habits and routines until you get results because then you believe it. Mm. Then you become motivated because you've already seen it you know i don't think motivation is going to get anybody started because you're super motivated january 1st but you don't have the discipline to keep going when it sucks Mm -hmm. so i think they're disconnected and i think one has to come before the other but i think overwhelmingly everybody tries to throw too much into the mix at once yeah and then they become frustrated and the motivation wears off they don't have the discipline to keep going well i think we all start with motivation yeah, it's short term. Yeah, I mean, there's. I think we've all looked in the mirror at some point and been like, "All right, we got to we got to do something about this." Um, so that's where that motivation starts. It's easy to talk. It's easy to say like, "Hey, I'm I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop 25 pounds. Here's what I'm gonna do. Bam, bam, bam." But when you start to actually get into it, that's when you need the discipline. Mm-hmm. Like that's when you need like when you're not feeling good, you gotta have that discipline to. Hey, I gotta get my ass out of bed. I gotta get to the gym. I gotta eat this. I gotta do that. Um, you need the discipline to stay motivated. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, yeah. so. not even a weight loss goal. Like you know, I, life, yeah. like yeah. Life, your job, life goals, college goals. I mean, you know, when when you're in year three, and you're just sitting there and you're like, wow, like there's no end in sight, you know, and you 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 understand that. But also, like I look at it, we're all you know, we've run for the you know 
we've done some crazy stuff. You talk about like January 1st, what happens like May 3rd (coughs) when there's, you know, a snowstorm. It's like, hey, here we go. Like this is this is the time where all those miles that you put in or a marathon, like training for a marathon at the beginning is great. Oh, I'm going to go for two miles. And then you have to do the long run at like week 10 and it's like 18 miles. And it's like that sucks especially if it's raining and you've done your marathon, your first marathon was in the rain. It's like you have, that's where the discipline comes in. Cause you can be motivated. You can watch a Goggins video or you could watch a, a Nick bear video and be like, hell yeah, I'm going to go for a run. But then it's raining or it's cold or it's hot as balls. And it's like, no, I'm, I don't want to do this. Yeah. That's when you put your shoes on and that's when you go out and do it. It's because you had the discipline because you use those little pieces of kindling to do it. Yeah. Casey made a good point. It's like motivation is short term. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you said, you can watch that Goggins video. You can get psyched up and get ready to roll. That's only short term. Like, how are you going to sustain that over time? Yeah. Like yeah. What's, what's the reason the why you want to do it is, has to be powerful. Yeah. It's your brain. Your brain, I think, is going to control the motivation and discipline more. You know, and I don't think like if you don't condition your brain. Let's talk about personal development real quick. Mm-hmm. If you're not overloading your brain with positivity and trying to be better some capacity in your brain, then the body's never gonna follow. You know, like you said, when it's really, really tough and you don't wanna go for a run and it's hot out mm-hmm. and your pace was super slow, but you still did it, right, yesterday? Yeah, thanks for that. No problem. You ran. But, but you still did it. You, you're still, like, you still got better mm-hmm. in some capacity. Your brain is gonna tell you that, hey, I need to do it or I'm not gonna do it. You'll yeah. make an excuse every single time. Yeah. Hey, I gotta run 18 miles, but I'm gonna stay in bed today. You know, and I think that the level of regret kind of diminishes your self-confidence. For sure. I saw a quote that said, like, motivation makes today easy, but tomorrow hard. And discipline makes today hard, but tomorrow easy. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Freaking nugget this morning. (laughs) Uh, We've talked about it before, too. It's like, it's so easy to get comfortable. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's, it's so easy to just, you know, stay in bed and not do anything. It's especially when you when you want to start a fitness journey or whatever it is, um, it's easy to just, you know, stay in bed and not get to the the hardest thing to do is get to the gym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once Um, you get to the gym. But how do you get to the gym? It's your brain. Yeah. Your brain talks you in and out of it. It's it's funny that we talked about coaches. Sergeant Major Johnson gave me the Johnson Johnson gave me the greatest like. He he was an older dude, and by older I mean he was like thirty seven. Sure, and so, you're younger. Yeah, and I'm yeah. a younger dude, so like let put that in perspective. I'm older than he was at that time. He looked up and he goes, "You want to know the worst three minutes of the day?" And I was like, "What is it?" And he goes, "When your alarm clock goes off and you're in bed with your girl, and you can look over and you can either get up and hit the snooze button, or you can and roll back over, or you can get up and go put on your shoes and out PT everyone who's younger than you, and you know." dig to go to the discipline thing it's like and comfort it's like everyone likes going on vacation how many of you are bringing your running shoes and your running shorts on vacation like that's discipline that's going to a beautiful beach and still being like it's eight o'clock in the morning i gotta get my run in and going out on that six mile run and doing it and making it count it's like that's the kind of stuff that separates those people i mean my opinion only yeah and then that stuff trickles into everyday life so if you start like I feel as though when I start my day like that, I have a productive day. Sure. If yeah. I don't, if I don't show up to the gym in the morning, and I don't, I don't get that in, I just feel off for the rest of the day. Yeah. So, not only does it give you great physical benefits, but I believe that that health journey helps your mind. It helps callous your mind, and it also helps callous your spirit. Mm-hmm. So, if you have mind, body, and spirit, you're an unstoppable human being. Yeah, but I also think sometimes people if they don't make it to the gym or if they're outside of that level of routine, they can't let that day spiral yeah. and just become that much worse. Cause I think it's a tough hole to climb out of if they don't give themselves that grace, mm-hmm. you know? So I think there's a level and that's where I think your brain comes in. Give yourself a little bit of, you know, like, Hey, you missed the gym. doesn't mean my day is going to be 10 times worse today. Cause I didn't go, you know? And I think you have to have a level of awareness too. Most people don't, mm-hmm. you know, what makes a um what's the level of in fitness or in coaching let's just strictly coaching the level of coaching that you can fix the, the most in yourself what's one area that you think you could enhance as far as your coaching techniques casey Ooh, okay i feel like i told you i was going to ask the hard ones today i know today. you always do i feel like this is kind of a 
double-ended answer because it's something I'm in the process of doing. But I also think there's still so much room to grow. But just like education, like constantly educating yourself, you like self-development, just sure. like you should never get comfortable. You should never stop learning about new things. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to go with that, like continue education, not just in the profession, but also in the personal development area. I know that yesterday we were, I was work, you know, training with an individual and I was bringing up some of the books that we have listened to, you know, Lewis Howe's Mask of Masculinity, uh, Jay Shetty's uh, Eight uh, Rules of Love, stuff like that. And these are the things that he was like, oh, okay. It's like, if you can give your clients something outside, I think that that's way more valuable than the one hour that I'm giving them here. The one hour is the physical part, but it's the mental part that might help them in a relationship or in a business atmosphere that I find is like really cool to sure. help out with. So. Um, I would go along with Casey as well, kind of like the preparation piece, um, making sure <coughs> that I'm well prepared for any situation because you can have a fantastic game plan for whatever it is, either training or for the, for the game field, whatever but there's so many different intangibles that can come in and ruin that game plan. So I think making sure that you are ready for anything, that the unexpected is, is super important. For me, I think I have to take myself out of the equation where I empathize too much, you know, where I think I care too much. And I think I try to put myself in their shoes and my personality is like I would go like zero to a thousand type thing. Understanding that I have to meet them where they're at, not where I would be at. So that's one of the hardest things that I have to do is remove myself and say like, hey, if I was in this position, why can't you just show up to every day? Why can't you eat this? You say like you really, really want it. So why can't you show that? Yeah. I watched a, I watched a, um, a TV show. It's, it was called Fit to Fat to Fit. Yeah. Where the personal trainers. Yeah. Um, Drew. Yeah, they take uh, three months and they eat as much food as mm -hmm. whatever. They don't do anything. So they gain all this weight and then they go on that fitness journey with that person so they can kind of empathize and understand how, how tough it is. So there's a guy named Drew who's done it twice. He actually wrote a book on it. Um, so like they document him like super, super fit. And then he gains 50 or 70 something yeah. pounds and he's huge. And then he goes through and shows the process of like, Hey, I can do it, but he's done it twice already. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And then he documents it. Like he shows his weigh-ins. He shows everything that he eats on a day-to-day -day basis. Like there's like Snickers. There's just eats garbage just to gain so much weight. Yeah. And you could see his body transform week after week after week. But then you could see the, the other end of the spectrum where he's like, hey, this is what I did to get rid of it all. Yeah. That's super cool, but super unhealthy for people too. Yeah. Well, they have a doctor too that like yeah. helps monitor their health and like, a lot of them start to get close to, you know, different diseases like heart disease or sure. getting close to diabetes. So it's like putting your body through that, your infrastructure through that. Yeah. Yeah. Not easy. Who's got the next question? I do. Okay, let's go. So I want to talk a little bit about the difference between a love for fitness and a love for coaching. Because I'm assuming it's safe to say that we're all sitting here today in the position that we're in because at one point we either were super invested into a sport or just the gym in general. So how do you translate like loving fitness to then knowing like, oh, I think I actually want to do this as my career? Because this is still pretty new for me too. So I always knew I wanted to help people in some capacity. I just didn't know what the vehicle was going to be. Okay. I wasn't smart enough to go to a doctor, to be a doctor or to be a nurse or anything like that. So I think this is the least um, amount of traffic for me to get to that point. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think it translated to sports because for me, it was like, you know, I didn't really work out in high school until I got to college. That's when I started to work out. One of the biggest regrets I've ever had too, because I didn't have the person that I was for you guys in my corner, you know, holding me accountable or pushing me like that. And I wish I did because, hey, my athletic career could have been a little bit different. But that's not, not anybody else's fault but mine. Um, but I think the love for transforming somebody and getting results, I think for me, uh, far outweighs a stat, a weight loss, or it's a legacy thing. Somebody's always going to remember you in mm -hmm. some capacity. Okay. So that's where my mind comes from. All right. Who's next? It's kind of cool because I, like, I feel like everyone's purpose as a human is to in some way, Service. shape, or form, 
be a service to someone else, yeah. like help someone else out. Um, so I think that's great. What about for you though? What's the difference between coaching and training? Because you're in both, like you're intertwined in both. Tough question. <laughs> It looks like he's sitting on barbed wire right now. He's so <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> like he had Taco Bell last night, and he's like, we're going to go. Come on, Dan, bail me out. All right, I got you, hot tag. Um, so for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy you a minute. Um, it was this place, actually. Uh, I, I, I've talked about it. I wasn't a physical person. I did high school wrestling for a couple of years. The Army, yeah, it's physical, but I, I hated doing PT. And then when I started doing the racing for a couple of years and realized I needed to up my game, I saw Tyler Whitney's transformation that you put did, did with him. And I walked in the doors and th I think it was two, 2021 really made me want to go on this journey because we had done the big team Spartan and getting people mentally prepped for that and all that other stuff. That was the first time I'd ever raced with people. I'd always made those trips alone. Uh, it was always lonely. And then to to see that and then pc like you're like when you joined us in um new hampshire and everything like for that one like and like dinner afterwards and all the the stuff that went along with it and then the natural progression eventually ended up working with ryan that was because my love of one thing led to seeing the results in others and the feeling that it gave me to see people accomplish something and realizing that was probably what had been missing the entire time um you know, selfishly, it is a great feeling to see someone be able to accomplish something that they didn't think they could. Uh, but it also motivates me to try and be a better human. See, I think I think it's opposite from what you're saying. I think uh, I'm disagreeing already. I think it. I think sports and fitness are connected in a sense because you know we start off as being athletes, um, and we love going through those. Uh, with sports, there's a lot of pain, a lot of growth. I think the same thing goes for fitness. You have to, you're battling, it's, it's you against you. So whatever, like in sports, it's in baseball we're saying, um, it's you against the pitcher. It's, it's uh, you, you have to be that guy. So like in fitness, it's the same thing. It's like, it's all up here. So when I beat you in golf every single time, you can't lean on That's anybody me. else. That's me. So you go home. And there's no one there to give you a tissue to wipe your eyes off. No, I have to do it myself. And to Someone needs to beat this man in golf. Like, oh, my put, God. <laughs> Pete kind of did, but I still won in money-wise. Um, <laughs> there's plenty of people that will beat me. I just choose who I play with. <laughs> to know I can uh, win. You got to take your own advice then. <laughs> I'm like off. Oh, geez. Who's got the next question? PC, you got the next question. We got like two minutes before we got to wrap it up, though. Okay. All right. Um, Ooh. If you could have one wish and one wish only, what would you wish for? Gosh. More time. That was easy. More time. I just, well, you know, I, a day? no, I just say more time in general, I think, because you can do so much. And I think, you know, when you see somebody pass away, whether young or old, everybody says, I wish I would have did more of something, right? Yeah. And I think that's, you know, going back and saying, I wish I had more time to travel or more time with my kids or more time, whatever. Um, I just look at my dogs weirdly as it sounds and you guys look at the wall, but you know, um, they're one of the toughest things to lose, I think in your life because they can't communicate, mm -hmm. but they're always so consistent. Um, I look at like my time with them as Hey, I wish I'm going to have more time with them. I don't, we talked about it the other day. Mm -hmm. We wish that they live forever. And then when we die, that they have to die. I know. They can come with <laughs> us. More time is my answer. One wish. Okay. I think I definitely agree with your answer, but just to change it up, I think like more opportunity, which I do think is something that I'm capable of like creating for myself, but just like constantly having the opportunity to grow and change and evolve as time goes on. How deep are we allowed to get? Um, uh, deep as you can get it. I wish I could be a dad again. Like I know um, we talked about it. Yeah, I know this is uh, heavy shit, but um, I feel like at this season of my life, it would be real cool to experience that like young kid all the way up because Logan's twelve and it's 
weird to see him become a man, but I spent so much time uh, doing other shit that I missed all the cool stuff. Like I missed the first day of kindergarten. I missed a lot of those things. It'd be kind of cool to just be able to experience that all over again. Um, but that's, that's a weird one. I like that. I have one more question too. Oh, okay. Um, how do you deal with pain? So as, as human pain's kind of unavoidable, you know, everyone's going to experience, well, not everyone, but most people experience heartbreak or loss, or, you know, things like things of that nature that can totally mentally traject you in another direction. So how do you overcome that? Um, what kind of, I guess, coping me- mechanisms do you have? And how, how do you how do you work with that? <laughs> uh, three products of therapy yeah, here. Right. Um, I think you embrace it. You don't question it. I think sometimes when something happens, you question it and you question yourself. Um, I think you have to deal with it and like cope with it and figure out how you can cope with it. Not what everybody else thinks that you should do. That's therapy, diary, you know, journaling, whatever, going for a run, taking it out on yourself, fitness wise, whatever. Um, but I think embracing the fact that it's changing you for the better, Mm -hmm. not for the worse. And I think don't put victim pants on. Don't say why me instead of saying why me try me, I think is the the quote I kind of went by. Um, and then no one that's, it's going to be okay. I think trusting the the process, this is easier said than done. I think cause once you're in the middle of it all and it sucks, you know, um, but somebody gave me one of the best pieces of advice that says, Hey, you're in a cloud right now, but one day the clouds are going to part and you're going to see the sunlight. And I think it happened and I'll never forget it. Being like, Oh man, I didn't think I was going to make it out of it, but I did. You know? Yeah. Um, to piggyback off of that. Um, I mean, cliche, everything happens for a reason, but I lived like the first 23 years of my life. Cause I am 24 now, I'm not 12 anymore. Old. Um, yeah. So old. I definitely had more of a victim complex of like, why does this stuff happen to me? And not in like a poor me sense, but I was just like, this doesn't make, I don't understand why this kind of stuff is happening. Whereas like therapy has helped me shift my perspective into like, you can't control what's going to happen in life. And you just kind of have to take it under the chin for what it is. Um, I, when you ask about coping mechanisms, I have a tendency to like mask things and kind of just like bury them and make jokes in order to cope with it. But truthfully, like it's, I think that I need to do a better job of like feeling the emotions and feeling the feels. But at the same time, the reason that I mask things is because it does help me like push through and just keep going and not dwell on it and be a victim in the situation. So I don't know. Minimize your trauma. Yeah. But that's not good. I shouldn't do that. So don't, don't do that. (laughs) Don't wag the finger at them, too. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> what about you, PC? Oh, let's go Dan first, because he deflected that. Good. Nice job. He was tr- smiling the minute he asked the question. Uh, I'm not Reader's good. Digest version, though. We only have a couple minutes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not good at it. Um, usually, stupidly, uh, I just pile more on to forget the old stuff, because it's hard to go through it. I just recently got back into therapy where, you know, we're doing two six week back to back things, working on that kind of uh, process. Uh, I don't do a good job with it, like I said. And I think that my biggest problem is, is that I need to learn how to face things head on. And instead of turning or putting a mask on, which is classic for me, um, it's classic for all of us. Yeah, just throw a mask on and, and because you have to show up for everybody else. I was gonna say, yeah. It's literally part of our job. Yeah. So. And, yeah. And I mean, the, the mask doesn't just change because like you've got kids, you gotta, you gotta put on a mask so that they don't see if shit's bad. But, but I don't think that we're the only ones that do it though. Yeah, like, oh yeah. You know, the, the mom, the single mom or the mom, you know, where the dad is always working, you know, and having to shuffle kids from here to there, they put on a mask too. Like everything's happy, go lucky. But inside mm-hmm. they're like, Hey, I'm miserable. The Instagram filter. Yeah. So, but, you know, that's the good part about it is, is that acknowledging that that's what I do. And then the product of therapy thing, it's like getting, getting myself into therapy in order to f- figure out how to f- fix that. Yeah. Big I, sign of strength right there is asking for help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think it's important to recognize those emotions and it's, it's okay to feel upset. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel angry. Um, 
but there's two different things you can you can do with that. You can sit there and feel sorry for yourself and put your head down and mope around while time goes on, or you can twist that, use the the negative situation that you're going in, and build upon it and grow from it and become the best version of yourself from it. So there's so there's two different paths you can take. Either way, time's gonna keep moving forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, obviously, people have their different severity of situations. Um, so it's it's hard to actually relate to what everyone's going through. Um, but I think you know, using those situations as a time of growth is super important, and to you know transform your mind and then transform your body. Well, the best, let me just transform the five hundred eight. <laughs> I actually just get tattoos too. I think yeah. that's another thing that I do. I tell stories, yeah, especially the Polaroids. Yeah, those are good. I know. Um, okay, let's wrap it up real quick. Let's let's end with a question, or let's end with a comment or advice. Okay, the people sitting in on um, on the couch. What are you saying to them right now today? I feel like we just all gave them good advice. Yeah. Well. Yeah how to deal with trauma, what would you say like how to start their fitness journey? And then we'll go with a separate question, but this is for you. Hey, why do they want to come see PC at 5 a.m.? There you go. If they're just starting off, what are you going to do for them that they don't have in their lives right now? Because um, you're going to gain a sense of purpose. You're going to have you're gonna have a great time with me. It's going to be fun. <laughs> you're going to get better. You're going to change your mind. You're going to change your body. You're going to change your spirit. Um, yeah, let's go. I'm ready to go. I can tell he's yelling into the microphone. Is it loud? Sorry. No, 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 definitely not loud. Um, you end the show with, with a question for us. Okay. Oh, with a question for you guys or with yeah, a let's question go. for our viewers? No, us. Um, oh shit. Well, can I say that on here? Yeah, you can. I asked all my questions. I was going to ask them a question. Okay. Ask them. All right. I want to ask how can our viewers take everything that we just talked about today? How can they be a coach to someone else in their life? Sure. So think about that. Think about how you can be influential in somebody else's life that might not be looking for it. And I think the only thing that people can control is themselves. So inspire yourself to inspire other people. So get outside yeah. that level of comfort, you know, d d dive into something that they don't think that they could do. Because I always say that there's somebody's watching you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else? No. No. You close the show. All right. Uh, find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and TikTok at, at the Gym Five One Eight. Uh, reach out to us, uh, Casey at the Gym Five One Eight dot com, Ryan at the Gym Five One Eight dot com, uh, Daniel at Five One Eight. He's at, gonna have his own. Yeah, a little bit. PC's gonna have his. It'll probably be Patrick at the Gym. Uh, Wait till you see his video on on the on his coaching profile. Oh no, is it? I don't know, but he, he's like. <laughs> you would all right uh yeah. thank you for tuning in this morning uh to another coaching over coffee and we will see you next saturday same bat time same bat channel thank you